So what do you do when your Etsy sales come to a screeching halt? This will inevitably happen and maybe you're at the place in your Etsy business where sales never started in the first place to stop. Either way, I got a really good episode for you today. I'm gonna dive into five strategies to help you take action, change the course of your shop when sales are very slow. Let's go. Ah, the weather is warming up, birds are chirping, and there's no sales in your Etsy shop. Ah, the worst thing that can happen, the worst thing that we hate when sales dry up. Uh, and it and inevitably happens for, uh, for specific reasons, right? We can understand why this time of year when it's things are getting warmer, we're going into the spring and summer months, you know, people start to travel, people are going on vacation, they're camping, they're going to the beach. So buying online slows down during this time period, um, especially if you're not in that specific niche. So it makes sense. But there are things that you can do in your shop and there's strategies that you can do um, to help alleviate the slowness or at least kind of counteract uh, the slowness. And keep in mind, things that I'm gonna talk about in this episode will work if your sales have slowed or stopped It'll also work if they haven't started to begin with. Maybe you're getting having a tough time getting your initial sales. These strategies work across the board for whatever your situation to help jumpstart your shop to get more sales. Uh, so today I have five strategies plus one bonus strategy for you because I like you guys uh, to help get things moving in your shop and get you through this dark time of no Etsy sales. So sit back, watch, learn, and take action after this episode. I got you. All right, the first thing that I wanna talk about, the first thing that you can do is diagnose the problem. Why have your sales slowed? Or why have they not started? Whatever the case may be, what is going on with your shop? So you gotta self-reflect a little bit, you gotta look at your shop and see what is going on. So is your shop seasonal? You know, Are you focused on, is your niche focused on things that aren't ha that people aren't buying during the summer months during the spring months so that's number one if your shop is seasonal then of course the slowdown makes sense if you're not offering uh buyers something during these warm and summer months then they're not going to be buying and things are going to ultimately slow down and then you can expect things to speed up during the normal buying time of your niche and this gets harder because for people that are newer because you don't know the buying cycle yet uh, you haven't completely learned your niche. That's why you got to sell for years before you really know the ins and outs of your niche. So that is number one that could be causing this. And if we know the problem, we can work on a solution, right? Which I want to talk about in other strategies with this uh, with this video. The next thing is, did you make any big changes? You know, have you made any sweeping changes uh, in the last couple of weeks that could have affected your performance? A lot of people do crazy things in their shop, not realizing that it will absolutely affect performance going forward. They think it's going to be a good thing and it turns out to be a bad thing. Number one being they delete a bunch of listings. That is not a good thing to do. Even if they're not performing great, you should refrain from going in and deleting chunks of listings in your shop because it really messes with the algorithm and it can really mess up your traffic. And you don't know how many of those bad listings are bringing in traffic for those people who are bumping to your other listings and buying. So I always try to be really cautious before I delete any listings. Um, listings aren't that expensive. So unless you have a ton of listings that aren't doing well, uh, be selective with making wide sweeping changes such as deleting listings in bulk. If you want to delete listings, be, uh, you know, be picky about it and do it here and there. Don't do it all at once. You should never do huge sweeping changes all at once you got to be strategic about it make changes on a small scale monitor performance make more changes monitor performance all right so that's don't make huge sweeping changes unless you have a huge problem in your shop that you need to fix so that could be number two where uh if you if you've made a lot of changes it's uh, affecting performance and you can either decide to revert back or just ride the wave if the changes are good things will ultimately pick back up once things settle down um, the other thing that to keep in mind are you looking at performance on a 30-day cycle so it could seem like things have slowed down 
Uh, and that may happen. There's ebbs and flow always when it comes to selling on Etsy, but it may not be as bad as you think. You may have a slow week, but your other three weeks you killed it and you're on par with what you're doing uh, month to month normally. So I try to look at stats on a 30 day period to really see what's going on with my business. Things change from, uh, you know, from day to day. You may have a terrible day one day. Uh, that doesn't mean that the sky is falling. That just means that there it's a down day. The next day you may bounce back and have a great day. It all evens out in the end. And that's why you have to look out on a 30 day cycle and even more look, compare your stats year over year. And that'll really tell you the story of what's going on. If you've been, if you've had your Etsy shop at least two years, you can revert back and look at that same time period from the prior year to see, okay, was this the same thing happening last year? Then it's trending, then it's seasonal. It's a seasonal problem. It doesn't mean that we can't work to fix it, but it is normal behavior. And that will help really guide you. So that's why it's important to sell for a period of time to really get a good handle on how your shop's going to do from year to year. And then use that information to your advantage to make changes for the positive for the next year, for the next cycle. So make sure you're not overreacting. Make sure you're looking at it on a 30-day cycle and comparing it to year over year. So those are that's the first really step and strategy is diagnose the problem so you can uh, really determine the steps that you're going to move forward with to help fix the problem. Number two really comes down to taking action in your business, especially if you've done step one and you know, kind of have a good idea of what the problem is. Now you need to take action to fix it. Even if you don't know exactly what's causing it or are not really sure what is wrong, what's happening, what's causing this slowdown. Focus on what you can control. A lot of people get really freaked out when things slow down. They throw up their hands and they don't do anything. They just, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll just close my shop. Maybe this Etsy thing isn't going to work, work for me. Wrong. That is the wrong attitude to take. Absolutely wrong. And that's nothing. That's an attitude that I will never support. So you have to take action. Whether it is the wrong move, the right move is better than no move, all right? So that is what you have to focus on doing, taking action in your business, pull up the sleeves, and it's time to get to work and focus on something. Sit back, maybe you don't know what's causing the fix, but sit back, look at your shop. What is the most impactful thing that I could work on for the next days, weeks, months to change the course of my shop? Can I add more listings? Can I revamp SEO? Do my pictures need work? Do I need new pictures? So what is the most impactful thing that I think is going on with my shop to set the tone for future success? Maybe you're not sure. Compare your shop to other shops in your niche. What do they look like? What are they doing right? I know it's not always a good thing to compare because then you feel like, oh, this person is doing so much better than me. Use it as a guide, as a beacon. They're doing it right. Or they're doing things uh, they're making sales for a reason is what I'm trying to say. So follow their lead as far as how they're setting up their shop and what are they doing right? What looks good? Do things using their guidance, using the, you know, replicate things, don't duplicate things, but use them as a guide to fix things in your shop. You know, okay, this shop looks great. My shop doesn't look great compared to them. I can make these tweaks in my own way to uh, capitalize on what they're doing right. So use that um, as an advantage, as a tool, but at the end of the day, take action, consistent action in your business to change the tide. Nothing will get better if you do nothing. You got to take action. Same thing. You're not going to lose weight if you're not changing something. If you're not working out, eating better, nothing's going to change, right? You can't expect a different result. That's insanity with doing the same thing. So the same thing is in your business. You can't expect things to get better if you're not doing anything and you're just sitting back and watching it happen. So take control. Number four, um, this is a, a really good step that you can take during a slow period is refresh your shop. Maybe there are some things that you've been putting off when sales were, were kicking. Hopefully at one point sales were doing well and you're just like, you put off like updating your banner image, changing your feature item, uh, you know, updating your about section, you know, things that you can kind of do to refresh your shop for people coming back, new people coming. When you open your shop initially, your shop is not going to be the best that it's going to be because you don't know everything yet. You, you get the doors open and that is goal one. You're not going to know the little ins and outs, the little tweaks that you can make to make your shop better. You're going to do that stuff over time. So you got to work that stuff in. 
So now may be a perfect time to refresh your shop and do things that you've been putting off to have a better banner image, uh, to have an announcement section, to start an email list and put it in your announcement section, different things that you can do um, to work on your shop that will benefit you later on. So look at your shop, see maybe now I have some extra time, I'm gonna take action and I'm gonna refresh my shop. Number five, the fifth thing that you can do is try running a sale to get things jump started. Usually I would recommend if you're gonna run a sale at least 20% or more. And now this comes back to everything I've talked about in past videos, your profit margin. This is one of the reasons why it's good to have a, a decent profit margin because if you don't have a decent profit margin, you absolutely will not be able to afford to run a 20% off sale. You need to have a decent profit margin to be able to do sales from time to time to jumpstart things, especially when things slow down, your audience size is shrinking, your traffic is shrinking, so the people coming and seeing your listings is smaller than normal times. So in order to capitalize on that smaller traffic, you have to give them something, give them an incentive to buy from you compared to someone else. And the easiest way to do that is through a sale. All right, so you can, you're making a little bit less money, but less money is better than no money coming in. So try running some sales throughout the slower months to jumpstart things um, and get things moving. Uh, and I missed, I just realized that I missed a step. <laughs> I jumped to number four and I missed number three. So if you caught that, you get a gold star for this episode. But I'm gonna jump back to number three. Um, and it's a good one, I'm glad I didn't leave this one out, is release products that are targeted to the slow season. Weather is warmer, like I said, kids are out of school, vacations are happening, camping, cookouts, July 4th. Can you release products targeted to these events and audiences? Do you have products that would work for these audiences that you can remarket and change your SEO, your keywords to target? This is the best way to sustain your shop throughout the year and through slow seasons. Most niches have products or can release products that capitalize on seasonality, holidays, um, specific events, specific occasions, whether you're remarketing your pro existing products or you're creating new products for these events, it's something that you can do. You know, if you sell wallets, okay, that's great. You can remarket that as a Father's Day gift now or Father's Day and capitalize on that period of time. So think about your products. Never think about your shop and your products as a one and done. They're multifaceted, they're multidimensional. Use them to your advantage with when it comes to marketing and when it comes to targeting with your keywords. So doing that will help give you a boost throughout the year, capitalize on slow periods. And that's something that you can work in. Maybe one, one year you focus on a couple of holidays or occasions, Next year, you add more, you add more, you add more. So think about your niche, think about what you're selling, how you can do this with your products, existing or new. And it's a great way to get things moving. It's a great way to boost revenue altogether. And it's a lot of, th and a lot of times people don't think about it. They don't think about it that way. Because the nice thing about those periods of time is those are traffic boosts. Those are, you know, the, the floodgates open with traffic. So if you have products, you're gonna capitalize on that traffic. Whereas other shops that aren't doing are not gonna capitalize on that traffic. They're just gonna deal with the slow period of time or the the traffic. they're gonna miss out on the traffic that's coming even if it's not slow, they're not targeting that specific audience. So think about your uh, what you're selling, your niche. Can you do that? And it's probably the best thing that you can do uh, to help your shop out during slow and slow periods and just all together. All right, now to fast forward back to where we were at, where I left off, I did five. Um, number six is refresh your listings that aren't doing anything. So before I talked about refreshing your shop sections in your shop, now it's time refresh your listings. Uh, look at your listings, the ones that have not been getting traffic for the last several months, those are the ones that you should focus on first. Uh, and no traffic, when you're getting no sales and no traffic, that usually means bad pictures or bad SEO. Bad SEO is, uh, if you don't know, it's keywords that you're using in your listing. So there's a reason that people aren't clicking into your listing because that is traffic. If they're not clicking in, you're not getting any traffic. So it could be pictures. It could be that it's not getting put in front of an audience, the right audience. 
for whatever reason, there's no traffic coming. Usually that's a great place to start. So can you make these adjustments based on what you're seeing, starting with your worst listings first? Can you tweak the SEO? Can you update the pictures and renew those listings to see if you can change the course of those listings and get them moving, get the traffic coming to them? Uh, so that's the best thing that you can do for your listings. And when you have a down period when it's slow, you can really start hammering out your listings and cycling back through the ones that aren't doing well to try uh, and get them to improve better. Uh, but those are the six things that you really should be focusing on when things are slowing down in your Etsy shop, you're not getting sales. And mind you, I should say that this is normal. It happens to most shops. There's slowdown periods, there's ebbs and flows. So don't freak out, do something about it. Use this list to do something about it. So number one, diagnose the problem, take action. Uh, number two is take action based on uh, your diagnosis of that problem. Number three, release new products focusing on those slow periods of time, seasonality, holidays, et cetera. Number four, refresh your shop, um, clean up your shop, change things that you've been meaning to change. Number five, try running a sale to get things moving. And number six is refresh listings based on the worst performers first. That is your guide. That is your strategy list to take action in your shop and uh, improve things. Maybe it won't improve things right away, or this year, but if you make those changes now, work on those changes now, I guarantee you next year or in the next couple of months, you will see positive results from taking action and using these strategies to help change, uh, change your shop for the better. But that is it for this episode. Before I let you go, I wanna let you know that I just revamped one of my most popular guides that I have there. It's how to get your first 100 sales on Etsy guide. I just revamped it, so if you downloaded it before, uh, download it again. I made some some changes in there for the better, added some more stuff in there for you, some more actionable steps to help you. Um, it goes along nicely with the things that I've been talking about in this episode, and it'll give you some more details and some more stuff that you can do uh, in your shop to get more sales and hit your first 100 sales and beyond. Mind you, even if you're beyond 100 sales, this guy will help you out, so make sure you get it at handmadeandbeyond.com front slash 100 sales free guide as always to help you guys out uh, that is it i'll be back soon with another good episode for you guys have an amazing rest of your day